Welcome back YouTube, I'm Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and in today's video I'm going to show you all the new changes in the first beta for Android 11. Google officially released the first beta today and this time is not by mistake. I have it here on my Pixel 4 XL and I'm going to show you all the new changes. This is my second video about the first beta for Android 11. Previously, I was using some screenshots and the screen recordings, but now this is the real deal. So you might be aware of some of the changes from my previous video, but I'm sure I will find more changes here that I'm going to share with you in this video. So let's check what's new with the first beta with Android 11. But before getting started, let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. The first change I'm going to show you here is called suggestions on home screen. And the first thing you will see when you install the first beta for Android 11 is this notification at the top says easily access your most used apps. And when you tap on it, you will get this quick uh, tutorial explaining to you that your phone will suggest the apps to fill in any gaps you have here in this area, which is called your hot seat. And for example, if you have any gap, it will automatically suggest the most used app you have. And if you have another gap, it will keep suggesting apps for you. And if you want to get back to normal, just drag your apps again on top of the suggested app and it will disappear. And if you are happy with the choice, you can tap and hold on the application and you will have here an option called pin prediction. As you see here, pin prediction plus the icon itself, if it's not pinned, it will have this kind of ring around it with a color that matches the application or the application icon color. So for example, Outlook here has a blue ring and YouTube Studio has a red ring. And when you pin the app, uh, so as you see here, it has an icon that looks like a pin, but here it says pin prediction. So it depends on the app if you have uh, quick actions here, so it will be minimized uh, on the top bar. And if you pin the app, it will change back to normal without any ring around the icon like uh, Outlook here. And when I pin this one, as you see, it's now a normal icon. And to activate this feature, you need to go to your home settings and you will see here a new menu called suggestions. And when you open that, you will get this animation explaining to you more how to use the feature. And here you will have two choices one for suggestions in all apps list and one for the home screen and the all apps list we are already familiar with this one at the top and the one for home screen is here and also you have the ability to block certain apps from being suggested like uh, for example if you want this app not to be suggested you can just tick it and save the changes uh, and it will list here all the apps you have including system apps as well and that's pretty much it when it comes to suggestions on home screen. The new change I'm going to show you here is the new power menu. When you press and hold on your power button, you will get a totally different power menu now. As you see, it has a black background. Even if you are on the light theme like I do here, you still get a black background. You have the basic options at the top like emergency, power off, restart. And when you tap on the three dots, you get lockdown and debug report. And I think the last one is for the beta purposes. And next to that, you have your home controls. Home controls include any smart devices you have, and you will get a quick shortcut for each device in your power menu. So let me show you how it works. So for example, I have here four smart bulbs in my home. I have the colo light, I have the wall lamp, desk lamp, and the floor lamp. And it, each one of them has its own tile. And when I tap on it, I can turn it off and turn it on, or I can drag my finger on top of the tile and change the brightness and I get a really nice haptic feedback with the change when you keep moving it you keep getting haptic feedback with every step all right and also you have some consolidated tiles like the office lights here for example and the living room lights I have two rooms one called office and one is called living room I can quickly turn on all the lights for the office only or the living room only depends on how you are organizing your smart lighting also you get another tile for all the lights across the home you can turn on and off immediately for all of them and also you can tap and hold on the tile and you will get this card from your google home app where you can also turn on and off and change the brightness in addition to the color and you can do all of this from your power menu which is really awesome also you can 
tap the three dots here at the top and you will get two choices either to add controls or edit controls when you tap on add controls as you see here i have one uh, bulb missing called ladder lamps and when i tap on it and save it it will show up here all right or you can simply tap the three dots again and tap on edit and here you can take off any uh, light you don't want all right and just hit save so i'm really happy with this change uh, but i'm still missing the cards and passes even when i have uh, some cards added to my google pay wallet i still don't get it on my power menu and to activate those two features you can go to settings and from settings you go to system and then gestures and scroll down to the bottom you will have power menu and here you have the first option called cards and passes it will it will show you the credit cards and passes you have saved on your google pay app and when you go to device controls it will show you the smart home controls you have if you have any uh, and uh, if you turn it off all of them and go to the power menu you will only get the basic options at the top and this area will be totally blank one more option under the power menu settings called sensitive content and if you have it turned off your cards and passes or your device controls will not appear while your phone is locked so as you see here i don't have my home controls showing anymore because my phone is locked and when i unlock my phone they show up again all right uh, and if you feel you are okay with that you can turn it on and in this case your credit cards and passes will appear and uh, your home controls as well without unlocking your phone so you can quickly uh, change things from here next the ability to add your media controls to your quick settings as you see here uh, i have youtube music playing a song and i can see the media controls here and instead of having a separate notification right here where my emails and messages uh, show up and when i expand my quick settings it the card becomes bigger and uh, you here you can definitely play and pause seek forward and backward like and dislike in addition to changing the output device so you can quickly change the output device and also change the volume from this quick card you get right here one more cool feature you get when you put your media controls in the quick settings area and you have multiple media players running at the same time either they are music apps or podcasts or anything you can swap the cards like this uh, it's going to show you all the media applications that are running and you can go and jump between them back and forth and when you have it collapsed like this the, the one that will show up here is the one that's currently playing so if i'm going to pause this one and play this one it will change here as well so this is the one that's currently playing and you can swap it if you want by expanding your notification shape this feature also works with up to five media apps at the same time so this is going to save you a plenty of space in your notifications shape but after activating this feature i noticed a little bit of lag when i get my notification shade i'm not sure if you can see that on camera okay and also the animation is a little bit broken when you expand your quick settings as you see here the bigger card is coming from the top while the smaller one is in place and to activate this feature you need to go to settings and then system and then advanced and then developer options and scroll down to the section called media and you will have here something called media resumption and when you activate that you will get the same exact behavior you see here another small visual change related to media controls if you are playing any media and you have the media card on your lock screen it now looks a little bit different first the media controls are on the right side and the album art is on the left side while here on developer preview 4 you have the album art on the right side and the media controls are almost in the middle also here the lock screen wallpaper will remain the same even if you are playing a song but here it will create this uh, uh, blurry background based on your album art it depends on the song you are playing um, so that's just a visual difference both of them do exactly the same thing another small visual change is under settings when you go to settings and you have your phone on dark theme 
Now you see the icons are black from inside, while on developer preview 4, as you see here, the icons are white. So let me show you this. Here is white and here is black. There is also a new animation that takes place when you pull down your notification shade. If you take a look closely at my wallpaper, you will see that there is a zoom out effect taking place here. All right. And that only happens if you are using a custom wallpaper. So for example, if you picked any wallpaper from the uh, styles and wallpapers app, this behavior doesn't happen. But if you set any wallpaper from any third party app or from your gallery, the uh, behavior will take place. One more thing related to visuals. If you have your phone set on dark theme and tap and hold on any application to get the quick menu, you will see it looks darker if you take a look at this top bar uh, and I have here the developer preview 4 and when I tap on hold you see it's a little bit gray so it's getting darker here with the first beta of Android 11. Next the styles and wallpapers app. Now you get three new icon shapes when you add a new style you will get three icon shapes which are right here. Let me show you this. This and this and this one. Next, the changes in the apps and the notifications settings. Here I have developer preview 4 and here I have the first beta and when you go to notifications, here you will see they are organized differently. Here you have the applications first and then the rest of the options will come after. But here you have three options and then the apps and then the rest of the options. All right. Uh, here the first option you have is called the notification history and when you go to it you will have the switch for the notification history and also you can quickly check your notifications uh, history over here but in developer preview 4 that was just a switch here is called notification history you can turn it on and off and to see the actual history you can uh, get your uh, or swipe down to get your notification shade and then tap on history but if you don't have a notification the history option will disappear so you will not be able to get it which is doesn't make any sense uh, so in beta 1 they solved this problem you can check your notification history from settings uh, if you don't have a notification already in your notification shape next in the first beta you have uh, a menu called conversations but here you have something called manage conversations they are exactly the same but they are named differently also here you have an option called the bubbles where you can turn it on and off but here you don't have this option you only can see bubbles under the developer settings next when you look at the rest of the options they are uh, exactly the same you have also uh, notifications on lock screen same as here sensitive notifications uh, here you have a skip lock screen but that's because i have face unlock here uh, here you have hide silent notifications in a status bar. Uh, everything else is exactly the same, nothing different. Um, but if you go to the conversations and you selected a specific conversation, you will see some uh, different options here. First, you have the same uh, priority or alerting choices. Uh, here you have bubble this conversation and here it's called only bubbles. It has also a different icon than this one all right and here you have also another option called all bubble settings here you can select if you want to have bubbles for a selected conversation which is this one or you want to have it for all conversations specifically for the whatsapp application or nothing can bubble which means uh, you are turning off the bubbles entirely for the whatsapp all right uh, you have here the same option which is called not a conversation on both sides uh, here you have some also visual changes like the sound icon uh, looks like a bell here and here it looks like a music icon. Uh, here the lock screen has an icon but here it doesn't. Uh, show notification dot doesn't have icon on both and the vibration is the same. Now let me show you the bubbles. Here I sent myself a message on the Facebook Messenger and as you see there is a bubble icon at the bottom right corner of my notification and when I tap on it the bubble will appear immediately and I will get here the message. All right. And if I send myself a message again, you will see a little dot here 
that represent I have a new notification waiting for me or a new message waiting for me. And I can, I can also move the bubble anywhere on the screen, which is exactly the same behavior as the normal chat heads of the Messenger app. But this is the only app I found currently supports the bubble feature beside the uh, native uh, messages app of Android. And if you want to take off this bubble, you have two options, either to tap this icon one more time, the bubble will disappear, or you can simply drag it towards the bottom of the screen and leave it in the X over here. And that's pretty much it. That's uh, the bubbles in Android 11. And I'm waiting for more apps to support it and see how it's gonna work. Next, there are some changes that I showed you in my previous video that are missing on my phone and I'm not sure what the reason for this. Uh, for example, this Wi-Fi card that I should get when I tap and hold on the uh, Wi-Fi icon under quick settings. That actually takes me to the settings. Uh, same as Android 10. I'm not getting the same uh, Wi-Fi card as my friend's uh, phone. All right. Also, uh, the extended screenshot button that you see here that I showed you before as well. I'm, I'm still not getting that either. So when I take a screenshot, I only have the share and edit buttons. I don't have extend. Uh, which is the same as developer preview 4. No difference here. Next, the screen recorder. And unfortunately, in the first beta, we still don't have the ability to record internal audio. We can only use the microphone. Uh, and I know a lot of you are waiting for this feature to come up, but still not yet. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the changes I managed to get my hands on in the first beta for Android 11. And in case if I missed anything, please let me know in the comments and I will definitely do a follow up video if I found more changes. So thank you for watching. I hope you like my video. And if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos.